Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily add filters to your post feed. Now, unfortunately, Elementor does not have this built in. Wish they did, but they do not as of recording this video. The good news is I finally found a good solution using this plugin right here called Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor. This plugin's great because it gives you a lot of control over the filtering system and how your post feed is going to look. So if you go to their website right here, if you click on widgets, you can go under here called post and this pulls up this page right here. This is the main reason why we purchased this plugin originally is because we needed a good filtering system uh, without having to hand code it or use any of these other plugins. Um, I've tried a lot of other plugins to do this, but this is by far the easiest one to use. And if you scroll down here, you can see they give you more than just a filtering system. Um, it's a really powerful uh, query builder. They give you different layouts, different skins. But right here in this tutorial, we're going to cover this right here, the filtable tabs. And so this is the type of functionality you're going to get. So these tabs up here are the different categories. And you select it and it automatically will update this uh, post feed right here. So this is what we're going to pull off in this tutorial is how I was able to create these buttons. And I'll also give you a few extra uh, tips on how to use this plugin. So here's the pricing structure for the plugin. And as you can see, they have over 50 different uh, widgets you're going to use. and I'm going to cover more of these uh, widgets in future tutorials. I do have um, a tutorial right now on the content toggle, so I'll leave that card up here so you can click on that one. But I do plan to go over a lot more of these widgets in future videos. And as you can see, it's really affordable. You can use it on as many websites that you want for right now $55 annual or for lifetime. If you just pay the $249, you have it for life and you get all of these widgets. So this is what we did and we use this on several client websites. Here we are on the back end of the website and once you purchase the plugin, activate it, install it, you're going to get a whole new tab system called Ultimate Add-ons and this has all of the widgets in here. So you just need to go down and scroll until you find the one called Post. Just click and drag that in like you would any other Elementor widget. So I already have that set up right here and I'll just go through a few of these different systems but the main thing that we're going to be targeting on this tutorial is the filtable tabs. So as you can see under skin they do give you a few custom made uh, skins so that's a really nice feature we don't have to manually code any of these things or design it. You can see I'm just kind of going through and you can see they can change right here and depending on what you choose down here a few of these options might uh, change. So in this case, we're just going to stick with the classic. So this kind of looks like how the default uh, post widget looks when you use Elementor. And under general, this is kind of just standard stuff with Elementor. This is how many posts per page. I just have the six here, three columns. You can do the different grid layouts. And what I do like about this is you can go to a carousel if you want. So that's a really nice feature. Um, other plugins like this might not have stuff like this with a carousel or the featured image you can have. A featured post right here which is larger so they give you a lot of flexibility without having to rely on another plugin so let's just go back to the grid here and by default the pagination is off so I just change that to numbers so if you look down here it goes one two three six next so you can limit how many pages you want so if you just want to have three pages you can do that and as you can see it would just be the three so if you just keep that off, it would just show all of the different pages that will correspond with this feed right here. The thing I like about this plugin is that they have a lot of little extra features just kind of built in, which is nice. So for example, this one right here is really nice because you would have to custom code this where you can link the whole box. So this makes it where the whole post is clickable. So instead of the user having to click on the image, the header, or the button, they can just click anywhere in here. So that's really nice that they have that built in. And this is a really nice feature to um, the equal height. So if you have, you can see right here, if a few of your posts um, have shorter titles and they don't go to a second line, you're going to have this little gap here. So with just one little click, you can have it where it automatically will just stretch to the bottom. So that's a really nice feature right there. So here's the query. So this is where you're going to pull in what categories you want to show or not show. And if you've already used the Elementor widget for post, it's pretty much the same, but they actually give you a lot more options here. So if you need more of an advanced query, uh, this plugin might be perfect for you anyways. So if you see right here, I just have it under post, so you can do your different custom post types. But in this case, I just want to post. And if you look right here, um, I have a lot of different categories on this test page. 
And so you normally wouldn't want this. This is a bit much. This is kind of a bad user experience. This is giving the user way too many uh, options. So what I like about this is you could just type in what you would like. So I have a web design one. So let me just click that. We can type in a SEO. And of course we have tons of Elementor videos. So just throw that in there. So let's jump down to the filtable tabs. And by default, this is off. So you just go into here, show filters, and you just click yes. And as you can see, I already have a few uh, styled up in here. So I'll go through the, these different settings here and what they mean. So the first thing is your filter by, you have an option between categories and tags. In most cases, you probably have categories. This is the all tab right here. So whatever you type in here is gonna be this button right here. Um, I think just keeping that all is good. Uh, you can also do dynamic, so they give you the option to do dynamic uh, information here if you have it. So this makes it where the user can go back to all of them if they need to. So that's good to have because if you limit the user to not go back to all, uh, they might get stuck into here and then they have to like reload the page. So it's actually good to have an all button and not remove that. Now this is something that I've never really seen in other plugins and that is the default tab on page load. So what that means is if you want the user to automatically uh, be tabbed into, let's say SEO, you can do that really easily. And the way you do it is you just type in the name of the category and it has to match exactly what the button shows here. So you can see it's SEO in all caps. And so right here, I just typed in SEO and let me hit update and show you on the front end that when the user first goes to this page, it's automatically going to select uh, SEO. Let me take that out so it always defaults back to all. And this is a really nice feature as well. This is called responsive support. So what this means is if you go to um, your responsive mode right here, you can see it goes to a drop down menu. So when I turn that off, you can see right here, if you have a lot of buttons, you're going to have to like style it up or it's going to get real messy for the user. So it's really nice that they give you the ability to just create that as a drop down menu. So if you look right here, these are just the different categories in the drop down menu. I do recommend keeping this option on unless you only have a few different categories where it can kind of fit up here in a nice clean layout. I would say in most cases you probably want this on. So let's get out of uh, responsive mode. And you can see right here, you can align it left, center, right. So whatever fits your design, that's the way to go. Now they give you the ability to style up the buttons right here. Um, it's a little confusing because some stuff you style here. And if you don't see anything to style within the sections here, you would click on style and then you can actually style more stuff here. Just a little confusing, but once you get used to it, it's not that big of a deal. So if you look right here, you have your normal and your active state. So your normal state is just the blue buttons where you're not clicking and your active state is when it is active. So right here where we have a black background on Elementor, if we click that, this is the background hover and active. So you can just style it up right here to a black background. So if we go back to normal, we have the text color as white, the blue background. And if you want to have a border, you can do that right here. So they give you the ability to add the normal and the active, which is really nice. Now this is where you can change how much width is in between your tabs. So as you can see, you kind of just stretch it out. You can do that. You can show how much spacing you want below it. So, and what's nice is they give you, of course, these right here. So you can change it depending on if you're on mobile, tablet, whatever it may be. And then they have the ability to add a line here if you want your uh, separator. They give you that right here. You change that color right here. And then if you need to change your typography for these buttons, you would do that all right here. So let's not make that really big. Let's bring it back to normal. And let me turn off that separator. Okay. So that is most of the options in here. And like I said, if you want, you can control a lot of different elements in here. So this is where you're going to control your image sizes on hover. They give you tons of different options. So um, it's a lot to go over in this one tutorial, but I just wanted to go over how easy it was to add these uh, tabs right here. Cause like I said, I've used other plugins and it's not this easy. Um, Cause what is really good about this plugin, they give you the ability to style it all within the Elementor um, customizer here. And that's it for this Elementor tutorial. Let me know if this was helpful in adding tabs to your blog post feeds. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new Elementor tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.